Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Rainbow Six Siege Operator Guide. In this video, we will be discussing Ella, the defensive operator for the Grom CTU. She can wield the Scorpion Evo 3A1 SMG and the FO-12 shotgun as her primary weapons. She can also wield the RG-15 handgun as her secondary. In addition to these weapons, Ella can bring barbed wire or impact grenades into the siege as her secondary gadgets. Now before we continue with the guide, please consider liking the video to help out the channel and subscribing to the channel for more amazing Rainbow Six Siege videos. With that out of the way, let's begin. Let's start with her primary weapons. The Scorpion SMG does lower than average damage, it matches that of the Russian 9X19 DSN SMG. The fire rate for the Scorpion however is quite high. It's actually the second highest fire rate for an SMG in the game, only being beaten by the Vector. Also, the Scorpion has a magazine capacity of 50 rounds, making it tied with the P90 for largest magazine for an SMG. As for the weapon's recoil, I would say it lies somewhere in the middle. It's not too drastic, but you can certainly tell it's there. It may take some people a few rounds to get comfortable with it. It took me about 3 or 4 matches of using her straight because, you know, I got those fast thumbs, I always get Ella as an operator. It took me a few rounds, but once you nail it in, it's not that bad. With its high fire rate and large magazine, the Scorpion is capable of shredding through enemies and being able to sustain fire for quite some time. It does have lower damage, so when aiming for the chest, it might take a few extra rounds. As always, you should aim for the head. If you do this, I think there's a high chance you're going to like this SMG. If you aim for the head and pull down the trigger, you're going to fire so many bullets so quickly for such a long duration that one of those bullets is likely to hit them in the head. That's if you're not killed anyways. It has a large magazine and a high fire rate, so really it's more built for spraying and praying. But if you tap fire, the recoil isn't that bad, it can actually be quite accurate. So I suggest tap firing at range, but anything that's medium to close range, you can go full auto and be perfectly fine. Now let's move on to her shotgun, the FO-12. The FO-12 does lower than average damage, not quite the lowest, but it's down there. The shotgun is semi-auto, so it fires as fast as you can pull the trigger. But be warned, if you spam the trigger, the massive amount of recoil will have you looking at the ceiling in no time. My suggestion would be to pace your shots if you're at medium distance, but if you're close enough to be nuzzle cuddling them, that's where you basically have the barrel like up against their body, spam away my friend because you will kill it. As for its magazine capacity, it can hold 10 rounds, which is tied with the SASG-12 for the largest magazine of a shotgun. With its high magazine capacity and semi-auto fire, it really encourages spam fire, or at least firing more than a few shots. It does low damage, so you're going to need to land a few extra rounds to bring your target down versus some of the pump action shotguns in the game. I would recommend getting as close as possible, then letting your trigger finger rip. If you can sneak up on your opponent, you can bring them out in no time. Also, if an uh, enemy catches you off guard, spamming away could save your life. It's really just circumstantial, I guess. If someone surprises you or you surprise someone, spam fire might be your best bet. But if you know, you're in active engagement and stuff like that, maybe pacing your shots is a better option. It really determines, it really depends on if you can control the recoil and the distance at which you're engaging your enemy. So, but just basically, spam fire if you're close, uh, any longer than that, just tap fire. Her only secondary weapon is the RG-15, which deals average damage, has an average fire rate, and a magazine capacity of, well, 15. But there's one special thing about it. It is the only handgun that has a red dot sight attached to it. This means it feels much more precise than some of the other handguns. It makes lining up headshots at range much easier and when using a handgun at range you always want to aim for the head since it takes quite a few shots to bring an enemy down. It also helps that it feels like it, the handgun has no recoil. I've tested it and honestly if there's any recoil I don't really feel it. As for her secondary gadgets, she can either use barbed wire or impact grenades. Which one you choose is up to your playstyle. If you're more of an anchor, I would use barbed wire since it can slow enemies down and kind of, you know, lead them into your mines, which if they're in barbed wire and they get hit with one of your mines, they are in a bad spot and they are pretty much trapped and you can pick them off for an easy kill. But if you're a roamer, you should probably pick impact grenades to create new pathways if you need to like rush to the objective area or just whatever. So if you're an anchor, I would suggest barbed wire. If you're a roamer, I would suggest impact grenades. Let's move on to her special ability. Ella comes equipped with four Grismop mines. She can throw these mines on the walls, ceilings, and floors, and they're triggered when an enemy walks into their proximity. When triggered, the mine disorientates the enemy, meaning it blurs their vision and adds a black border around the edges of their screen. And it kind of makes it difficult to aim because their vision's blurred and it gets a little dark and they can't really see well, meaning they can't really shoot you that well. 
And it's important to note that when enemies are hit with the mine, they cannot sprint during the mine's duration. I mean, they will be slow and easy targets to shoot because they can't really see that well and they can't move quickly, so they can't just run away from you. So if you hit someone with the mine, it's very likely that you can rush them and pick them off. Now, these are mines after all, meaning it's very important to place them in good spots. Placement's kind of everything. I recommend putting them above windows or on the top of doorways since it's harder for enemies to shoot them without exposing themselves. If you put them like above windows or like higher up on doors, they're gonna have to expose their head or their body out of cover in order to shoot them, meaning they can you can just shoot them while they're distracted. I also recommend that you place the, the uh, mines on hot routes throughout the map. Routes that the attackers are most likely to take. The way I usually do this is by using my map knowledge, like which is where do players most often run, or I think as an attacker. I ask myself, if I was an attacker and I saw this defense, all the reinforced walls, all the traps and stuff like that, where would I go? Where would I breach? Then I place mines in those places and wait. Once an enemy does trigger a mine, there's a few more tactics that you can deploy. You can either rush their area and kill them, you could use this time to play the objective, such as defusing a bomb. Like, let's say it's a 1v1 scenario, and the last enemy triggers one of your bombs. But, they already planted the objective. While the, the mine is triggered, you could go and defuse the bomb and win the round. I mean, you might not get the kill or the glory of the kill, but you won the round and that's what's most important. Playing the objective is the most important. So you can kind of use it like that. Or, you could just wait for the enemy and use your patience to get the upper hand. Some people, when they get hit by the mine, they panic. And if you just sit in the objective area, if you're just patient, if you don't expose yourself, if you just wait for the enemy to come into your viewpoint, you can win that engagement just because you're patient and you decide to wait. I can't tell you how many times I got too cocky or too aggressive as a defender and died just because I didn't wait for the enemy. And when you're playing Ella, having a lot of patience and just waiting for your enemy to fall into your traps and to just fall into your line of sight is just one of the key parts of playing her. So you can either rush them, play the objective, or just wait. And sometimes waiting is the best is the best tactic you can really use. Now let's get to the combos and the counters. First we'll start off with the combos, as always. Ella can combo well with most defensive operators because it really determines, like her effectiveness determines on where she puts her mines. So most operators can combo pretty well with her. But I feel like she combos well with other trap operators. Like just imagine a full trap team of Ella, Legion, Frost, Capcom, Bandit, or Mute, or Echo, or Jaeger. There's a lot of people that could she sub in. I think the main four would be Ella, Legion, Frost, and Capcom, but like you can pretty much put any defender in that fifth spot and be fine. If everyone were to use their traps, the enemies would have such a hard time making any progress toward the objective because they'd have to watch out for Ella's Grisma Mines, Legion's Goo Mines, Frost's uh, Welcome Mats, and Capcom's Trip Mines. So that's a lot of stuff for them to watch out for and a lot of chances for them to die. Ella also combos well with operators that are 3 speed since she can, since they can rush disorientated enemies. This means Bandit, Jaeger, Javier, and Pulse can also combo pretty decently with Ella if there's some coordination involved. Now, who counters Ella? Well, anyone that is great at destroying gadgets. This means Twitch can use her drone to destroy uh, the Grismont Mines, Thatcher can use his EMP grenades to destroy the Grismont Mines, and IQ with her electronics detector can just find the Grismont Mines and shoot them. And those are the like the three I would say that are especially well equipped to counter Ella. But it must be said that Ella's Grismont mines can be destroyed by any bullets, meaning any operator with a watchful eye can counter Ella. That's it for this Ella operator guide. I want to hear from you guys in the comments. Do you like Ella? What is your weapon of choice when you use her? Is she the new Bay? Am I wearing pants right now? I don't know. So let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm the Battle Moon, and I will see you in the next siege.